We use up a whole lot of firewood in Sweden now because of the cold and the ridiculous electrical prices. We haven't used our electrical stove for the entire winter. But it's sort of nice cooking on firewood also gives you extra heat so you don't have to use as much power for heating either. Anyway this isn't what we burn now, this is green beech that I cut down last week. I've also taken down a few spruce trees that are dead and nicely dry because of a bark bug problem that we have in Sweden because of how the forest companies cut down all the old forests and just plant one species of trees that makes the bugs happy but I'm not gonna talk more about the dead spruce trees today I'm gonna talk more about this Rinaldi axe this is the subject for today's video, the Rinaldi Calabria axe that I bought recently. 900 gram head. I sort of liked it as it was when it came. Just did a little bit of light sharpening work on the edge. But right after that I took it inside the workshop and uh, started reshaping the profile with a file. And I thought that made a huge difference. So I'm going to uh, shoot a little bit of that and talk about that in this video. I hope you like it. Please tell me what you think in the comments section. Here's what you need to do if you want a nice cutting axe and not a splitting axe. Take a file to the profile. This is a medium cut file, I believe. Cheap crap file that I already used up on another axe. Doesn't really bite anymore. So I got a new cheap crap file. I haven't gotten out of the box yet. This one is so cheap they don't even state on on the package what uh, how coarse it is, but I think it's a medium as well. Some people say buy expensive ones and be happy. I don't totally swear to that. I think if you're trying out something new and can get stuff for that on a mediocre budget then do that first and when you know what you need buy something decent then and uh, what you want to do is uh, file down the cheek of the axe because when it comes from the maker it's usually very convex in the shape. This was pretty narrow and flat but it could still be a lot flatter which I discovered right away. As before I looked at Ben Scott's YouTube channel he's talking about a 15 degree bevel and then a 20 degree micro bevel just on the edge. I don't measure my bevels but I try to follow that principle somewhat I make it really flat and do a small micro bevel should probably have a fine cut file for that but I will probably just use grinding stones for it instead now you don't want to file right out to the edge when you do this you want to file just inside of it take it off where it is too thick and too convex aim towards the eye and lift up a bit and then start working away And 
and as you can see you get immediate results you can see clearly where the file takes off material but you can also see I'm not going all the way down to the edge I'm leaving I don't know it, what it will be a couple of millimeters I'm not going to do this to a totally professional level. I don't have a bevel gauge to measure the edge. I would just take off most of the hump just behind the edge and flatten it out gradually back towards the eye. It doesn't have to be totally flat. A little bit of the curve is nice, but not as much as it has when it comes from the factory because then it just doesn't bite as it should. So I'm not sure if I will actually hit 15 degrees, probably not, but if you have that as a sort of reference for this operation, then you are at least aiming in the right direction. taken off quite a lot now. I did a little bit of work before as well, but I wanted to show you the process. So uh, that's almost 15 millimeters from just behind the edge and up on the cheek where I removed material now. I can do a little bit more, I think. This is a medium file. If you also have a fine file, you can take that afterwards and you get a smoother finish right away before you take your grinding stones to it. Now when I did most of the work on the cheek, I want to go a little bit closer to the edge. As you can see now, there's a few millimeters of edge and I want to shrink that down a little bit. This will also produce a slightly concave edge, but not nearly as much as when it was new. You can do it like that. You can also do a chisel grind where you file it exactly flat all the way out, and then you put on a small micro bevel. I won't do that. I will do a very slightly concave finish and a micro bevel in the end. a lot better. I'll do the last bit with the grinding stone.
I think I'm gonna be happy with that for now. It's nowhere near a perfect job, but it will make a great difference when I cut. And now I will... Uh, let's see if I can focus on it at all. Now I want to do a micro bevel on that. I will just use the sharpening stone, tilt it a little bit. Don't need much really. sure if it would cut paper or not, but it will definitely cut wood. People seem to love these tests. I'm not sure what they actually tell you. Ah, it doesn't cut paper. Ah, well, maybe a little bit. But then again, I'm not cutting paper, I'm cutting trees. I don't think this was anything I really needed. I'm back on the slope behind our house. So, let's see how well it cuts now. I'm not sure what species it is. I'll try it anyway.
Well, even with my less than excellent skills, I think it's fairly obvious that it already cuts a lot nicer than before. I think I can cut it once more where it sits in the air. So, conclusion, it helps a lot filing the edge profile to proper shape, even with as little as I did now it makes a noticeable difference. So try that if you think your axe doesn't work properly. <laughs>